Okay, so uh, this time we are going to discuss the data security techniques. No? Again, uh, information technology and the internet have indeed made things easy for us. No? So on the other hand, they had also brought about the rise of security threats. No? Data privacy and data quality are now big issues and it is now essential that the most crucial information and data are protected. So the first thing you have to do is to sort out the data you consider confidential and need protection so it doesn't get out. So this means that you have to carry out a careful audit of your data to understand what the security is. So you have also known that the parts of your data are vulnerable uh, enough and need to be protected. So in short, you must carry out a data governance process to have complete over your data. So it is very important for us to, to know on how we'll be able or what are the available techniques for us to savor our information and data. So to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our presenter. Good day, Mr. Abante. I am Jerry Cosan Juan in behalf of Preven Maglunog. And our topic for today is computer security techniques. What is computer security techniques? Computer security, also called cyber security, the protection of computer systems and information from harm, theft, and unauthorized use. Application of technologies, processes, and controls to protect systems, networks, programs, devices, and data from the computer itself. It aims to reduce the, the risk of cyber attacks and protect against the unauthorized exploitation of data and information input to it. 10 Cyber Security Tips Number 1. Keep your software up to date. It is important to update the software because they often include critical patches and add security on the computer itself. Aside from this, it also includes new features or better compatibility to different devices. Number two, use antivirus protection and firewall. Antivirus protection, it helps to protect the file system against unwanted programs. On the other hand, a firewall helps to keep attackers or external threats from getting access to your system in the first place. Number 3. Use strong passwords and use a password management tool. Password provide the first line of defense against unauthorized access to your computer and personal information. <clears throat> the stronger your password, the more protected your computer will be from hackers and malicious software. Number 4. Use two-factor or multi-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication adds an additional layer of security to the authentication process by making it harder for attackers to gain access to a person's password alone is not enough to pass the, the authentication check. Number five, learn about phishing scams. Be very suspicious of emails, phone calls, and pliers. Falling for a phishing attack could lead to hackers stealing your login information, stealing your personal data or, or university information or taking control of your device. Hackers could also comprise other accounts that use your email. Number six, protect your sensitive personal identifiable information or PII. The main way to protect it is to keep it in area where access is controlled and limited to person with an official need to know. Number seven, use your mobile devices securely. We need to take care of our mobiles because if it's lost or stolen, your, email co your emails, contacts, financial information, and more can be at risk. To protect your mobile phone data, you can make sure the data is encrypted. Number 8. Back up your data regularly. We need to back up data regularly so that it 
there is an unnecessary happening. It won't be lost or deleted. Number 10. Number 9. Don't use public Wi-Fi. We should avoid using public internet because there are many devices which are connected to it that may bring virus or harm to your device. Number 10. Review your online accounts and credit reports regularly for changes. You must review your online accounts because if these are not updated or anything, it will cause problems to your device. Tools and techniques used in, the cyber, used in cyber security. Authentication. This fundamental cyber security technique intends to verify the, the identity of user based on the credential stored in the security domain of the system. Encryption. Encryption renders data undecipherable without application of a property to unlock the same. To combat an encryption, one would be required to undertake solving complicated mathematical problems, like factoring large, large primes that would consume astronomical amount of computing resources and time. Digital signatures can provide evidence of origin Identify and status. And status of ele electronic documents, transactions, or digital messages. These are signif significantly more secure than other forms of electronic signatures. Antivirus is designed to detect, prevent, and take action against malicious software in your computer, including viruses. <coughs> Firewalls provide protection against cyber attacks by shielding your computer or network from malicious and necessary network traffic. Why security is the most important? Security plays an important role in controlling violations, maintaining discipline in the workplace, and ensuring rules and regulations are being followed. They can take disciplinary action against violators and individual misbehaving. Slide number 7. What is operational security? Operational security is is the effectiveness of your controls, sometimes referred to as technical controls. These include access controls, authentication, and security to topologies applied to networks, systems, and applications. Operational security is a security and risk management process that prevents sensitive information from getting into the wrong hands. It is both a process and a strategy, and it encourages IT and security managers to review their operations and systems from the perspective of a potential attacker. Physical security. Physical security is the protection of personal data, hardware, etc. From physical threats that could harm, damage, or disrupt business operations, or impact the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of, of systems and or data. Physical security is the protection of personal hardware, software, networks, and data from physical actions and events that could cause serious loss or damage to an enterprise, agency, or institutions. That's all. Thank you. Okay, so uh, again, uh, I don't know if you have an idea of, of an example of a sample virus or worms in boots now. So most commonly, no, uh, we have a subroutine, no, do damage and what damage do that, no, sub subroutine trigger full, no, and of course the infect executable is triggered, no, next, no, so. 
<clears throat> Again, the initial infection, no? once a virus has gained entry to a system by infecting a single program, <clears throat> It is a position to potentially infect some or other, uh, all other executable file on that system when the infected program execute. No? So the virus classifications, we have a virus classification by target. Now we have the boot sector infector, file infector, macro virus, and encrypted virus, still virus, polymorphic, and metamorphic virus. So one example of a stilt virus was discussed, no? the virus that uses compressions so that the, the infected program is, is exactly the same length as the infected virus. No? A, pol uh, a polymorphic virus creates copies during replications that are functionally equivalent, but have distinctly different bit patterns. No? So for the virus kits, no, another weapon in the virus writer's armory is the virus creation toolkits. No? <clears throat> Such toolkit now enables a relative novice to quickly recreate a number of different viruses. So, uh, my macro viruses actually in the mid 90s no, became by far the most prevalent type of virus. <clears throat> so, the email viruses are more recent development in malicious software, is the email. Okay, the first rapidly spreading email virus such as Melissa made use of a Microsoft Word macro embedded in an attachment. If the recipient opens the email attachment, the word macro is activated. So the email virus sent itself to everyone on the mailing list in the user's email package. And the virus does local damage on the user system. So Worm is a computer program, of course, that can replicate itself and send copies from computer to computer across the network. So we have the electronic mail facility, remote execution facility, cap capability rather, and remote login capability for WORM. So <clears throat> uh, for the state of WORM technology, the state of the art WORM technology includes the multi-platform, the multi-exploit, the uh, ultra-fast spreading, polymorphic, metamorphic, transport vehicles, zero-day exploit. No? And uh, of course, when it comes to boots no, or robot, no shortcut for robot, no boots, shortcut for robots. Also known as zombie or drone is a program that secretly takes over other internet attached computer and then uses the computer to launch attacks that are difficult to trace to the boots creator. So the boot is typically planted on hundreds of thousands of computers belonging to unsuspected third parties. So the collection of goods open is capable of acting as coordinated manner such as collection or collection or what we call bootnet. So ang anong gamit ng bootnet? Of course, number one, uh, DDoS, no? yung DDoS natin, no? distributed denial of service, spamming, no? sniping tra uh, traffic, k lagging, spreading new malware, installing advertisement ads on in browser helper objects, attacking IRC or the internet relay chat networks no? <clears throat> and manipulating online polls or games. So when it comes to rootkits, no, it is a set of programs installed on a system to maintain administrator access to that system. Uh, root access provide access to all the functions and services of the operating system. So the rootkit alters the host a standard functionality in a malicious and stealthy way. So with root access, an attacker has complete control of the system and can add or change programs in files, monitor, process, send and receive network traffic and get backdoor access on demands. So rootkits can be classified based on whether they can survive a reboot and execution mode. So a rootkit may be persistent, memory-based, user mode, or in a kernel mode. Okay, so again, uh, when it comes to uh, techniques, no, when it comes to system level call attacks, no, we have the modify the system call table, modify system call table targets, and redirect the system call table, wherein the attacker redirects references to the entire system call table to a new table in a new kernel memory allocations. So I think that's it for this topic.